Hello, everyone. Uh, so yeah, I will be talking about Sonic uh, VXLAN overlay with ECMP and, uh, and the BFD of support of it in uh, data centers. Yeah, so uh, my name is Abhishek. I am software engineer in Microsoft. Uh, so the agenda for today will be a brief overview of what is VXLAN overlay, ECMP, and BFD. A uh, couple of use cases that how we are using that one in our data center, like load balancer and with the high availability. Uh, how we program those overlay routes and the monitoring of those VXLAN tunnel using BFD. So, uh, so just an overview on like so as we move uh, to a higher bandwidth data centers. Uh, with the adoption of 400 gig uh, technology, we need more pro flexibility in programming the networking infrastructure. So one of the use cases how we use that uh, flexibility is using overlay ECMP with VXLAN tunnel. Uh, so so uh, plus uh, we also use multi-hop BFD sessions to monitor those VXLAN tunnel. Uh, so what is overlay ECMP? Uh, basically overlay ECMP is a technology through which we can program routes uh, in data center uh, with tunnel remote endpoints. Uh, so the next stop members of these routes will be uh, tunnel next stops. And so the packet when going to the tunnel endpoints will be encapsulated and then will be load balance while reached to the tunnel endpoint over the underlay network. And these routes are programmed uh, via controller can be via REST API or GNMI or GRPC calls. So now uh, talking about the use case, uh, so first of the use case is server as a fault domain. So in a, before we enabled dual TOR in Sonic, uh, so TOR was the, always the fault, fault domain. So basically, we can't put uh, multiple critical resources under a single TOR. Uh, but with the, enable, uh, with, with the uh, enablement of dual TOR, uh, the, uh, the server has become a fault domain. So, so basically, that has enabled us to put critical resources under a single TOR, multiple critical resources under a single TOR, uh, which has enabled us to deploy us uh, data centers which have like typically five rack or small uh, in the satellite region, which are low demand. So uh, with the, this enablement, uh, some of the critical resources, one of them being a software load balancer, uh, instead of uh, putting them under different TOR, now we can put multiple of this load balancer under single TOR. Uh, so uh, that way we can uh, support a small deployment region. But if we use traditional underlay routing ECMP technology, the challenge with that will is that we can't effectively load balance the traffic to uh, multiple load balancers which are under the same TOR. Uh, basically, if we use underlay uh, network route routing, so packet will be a load balance using a standard five tuple, and it will land on the same TOR, and then we can't distribute the traffic across different load balancer under same TOR. So. Uh, so, so to solve that problem, we have used uh, overlay ECMP. Uh, basically, using overlay ECMP, we directly have a, a tunnel between a, a T1 router, the leaf router, and the load balancer that is sitting under the tor. And then, uh, basically, uh, the route will do a, a load balancing on that uh, tunnel endpoints. Uh, so basically, uh, uh, if I give an example, for example, if we have two load balancer under one tor and then another one under different tor, but traditional underlay ECMP, the traffic will be like 50% going to one tor and then remaining 50% will be get distributed under two different uh, load balancer. But with using overlay ECMP, we can load balance across all the three endpoints uh, and then we can have a equal distribution. So this is how the typical uh, uh, use case one will look like. There will be a leaf router, and then there's a tunnel endpoints, which is representing a MUX endpoint, the load balancer endpoint, uh, sitting under the T zeros. So we will have a tunnel uh, from the leaf router to the uh, VTAPs, which is a, a SLB endpoints, and the route will be. If I just zoom in. 
Yeah, if we, yeah, basically the route will be a, like a, the WIP, which is advertised by the load balancer, and the next stops will be the uh, tunnel next stops pointing to the tunnel endpoints. Uh, so these routes are programmed using the, the controller by the controller uh, using a REST API calls. So the flow will be uh, basically uh, uh, the when packet is going out of uh, T1, uh, T1 will encapsulate the packet under a VXLAN header, uh, and then uh, it will use the underlay ECMP to reach the T0, and then finally to the load balancer. So the route that is advertised by the MUX, the WIP route, instead of which is in traditional networking, we use, we'll use BGP to advertise that route towards T1, but with the use of overlay ECMP, instead of using BGP to advertise the WIP address, the the controller itself will program the route on the T1, uh, uh, pointing out like to reach a WIP of 100.100.0.80. Uh, you use the tunnel next stop uh, with the corresponding VNI uh, on the T1. So basically, uh, on the T1, then the packet will get encapsulated with the uh, with the VXLAN header uh, with the corresponding VNI, and then uh, will go to the MUX. Uh, so coming back to another use case that we are using overlay ECMP is like uh, to support primary and ba uh, basically high availability for the SDN appliance. Uh, so SDN appliance basically is something which can maintain the state of the flow. Uh, so in typical architecture, we always have a primary and backup SDN appliance. Uh, so the f uh, the f packet will be the flow will land on one of the SDN appliance and it will maintain all the state regarding that flow. Uh, and that will be synced to the sec uh, secondary or the backup appliance. Uh, but from the BGP perspective, uh, only one of the SDN appliance will be active at a, uh, at a time. So in current architecture, how we have done that would have been like uh, both the appliance will be advertising its uh, uh, IP to the T1s or T0s, uh, but with different ASN paths. So only one of them will be a best path and the packet will go to the corresponding uh, SDN appliance. So the, the one which is active will be a shorter ASN path, and one with uh, passive will have a uh, longer ASN path. Um, but the problem is, with that one is uh, instead of, uh, like we are using BGP to determine active and passive, uh, but with the use of overlay ECMP technology, uh, instead of using underlying BGP to determine active or passive uh, SDN appliances, the decision can be taken by the uh, controller based on the state of the uh, tunnel of going to the active, uh, and then the programming can be done by the sonic. So, uh, so basically, when there are two devices, one in active and another one is passive, the packet flow can be managed by configuring the T1 routers using overlay routes towards the active device. And uh, if that device fails, or, uh, then the route can be updated to pro uh, program to the passive, uh, the OLA route towards the passive. So uh, this ensures, uh, instead of using an uh, underlying BGP for doing uh, active passive handling, it can be done by the, by the software that is running on Sonic, basically by monitoring the health of the tunnel towards a given active state. And if the health of the tunnel is down, uh, it can reprogram the route to use the uh, uh, passive uh, SDN appliance. Uh, so uh, yeah, so how we program those overlay routes so basically uh, that have a uh, next stop towards the tunnel. So uh, one, as I told you, we can use SDN controller. So in, in Sonic, we have this, uh, uh, the, client, the client can be a REST API client, and then there's a REST API server. Uh, so the configuration come via the REST, and then that gets programmed into a Redis DB, and basically the route gets programmed into App DB, and then the SWS will react to that App DB programming, and then will do a, a processing and call the Sci and Sync D APIs. Uh, so, uh, so yeah. So till now we are talking about a point like how we program the overlay routes. Uh, so. But then both the use case depends how we make sure that uh, we always send traffic to the healthy tunnels or the tunnels which are active. Uh, 
So for that purpose, what we have been using is we are using a BFD. Uh, so the T1 will establish a BFD session with all the tunnels. Basically, each of the VTAP or tunnel endpoints will have two next stops, one for regular traffic, which will be used by the overlay ECMP route, and another will be a next stop monitor uh, endpoint. So the BFD session will be established with this next stop monitor, and, uh, and this will be a hardware offloaded BFD session. Uh, so basically, if let's say one of the VTAP endpoint is down or it's not uh, responding to the BFD packets, uh, the T1 will come to know, okay, uh, I need to uh, move my route from, basically I have to remove that particular tunnel from my next stop uh, ECMP group. So, and this BFD is supported by a hardware offloaded session. And the reason that why we have uh, used two separate next stops instead of using a common next stop for both overlay ECMP and uh, BFD is like, uh, we want to make sure the control path of the packet when it reaches the SDN appliance or the SLB MUX, which is sitting under server, is different. Like we don't want to overhead with data pack. Like we don't want to make sure like BFD packets are not uh, not not prioritized over data packets. So if we have separate next stop IPs, we can form a two different control path of packet handling, uh, data packet being handled separately and the BFD packets uh, separately. So, uh, so this will be a, like a, some, a state machine of how the BFD session is established basically with the MUX or the software load balancer. Uh, so uh, the T1 or Sonic running on the T1 will initiate a BFD session uh, and then the, the BFD client will uh, respond back uh, and then the Sonic will again set, uh, put the session in the up state and then it will keep on waiting uh, whether uh, if, it, if, the, if it doesn't receive a BFD response back, uh, basically it detects the session is dead and then it will take the action based on the session being expired. So uh, yeah, so this is one of the BFD sessions. So uh, this has been discussed in the community and uh, these are the design documents that have been there on Sonic. Uh, GitHub for both BFD, how we are using BFD, and then how we have used overlay ECMP uh, with the BFD. Yeah, thank you.